Hello, everyone. Today let's start to enjoy Aesop Fables. The Ant and the Grasshopper by Aesop The ants were spending a fine winter's day drying grain collected in the summertime. A grasshopper, perishing with famine, passed by and earnestly begged for a little food. The ants inquired of him, "'Why did you not treasure up food during the summer?' He replied, "'I had not leisure enough. I passed the days in singing.' They then said in derision, "'If you were foolish enough to sing all the summer, you must dance supperless to bed in the winter.'" The End Avaricious and Envious by Aesop Two neighbors came before Jupiter and prayed him to grant their heart's desire. Now the one was full of avarice, and the other eaten up with envy. So to punish them both, Jupiter granted that each might have whatever he wished for himself, but only on condition that his neighbor had twice as much. The avaricious man prayed to have a room full of gold. No sooner said than done, but all his joy was turned to grief when he found that his neighbor had two rooms full of the precious metal. Then came the turn of the envious man, who could not bear to think that his neighbor had any joy at all. So he prayed that he might have one of his own eyes put out, by which means his companion would become totally blind. Vices are their own punishment. The Bat and the Weasels by Aesop A bat who fell upon the ground and was caught by a weasel pleaded to be spared his life. The weasel refused, saying that he was by nature the enemy of all birds. The bat assured him that he was not a bird, but a mouse, and thus was set free. Shortly afterwards, the bat again fell to the ground and was caught by another weasel, whom he likewise entreated not to eat him. The weasel said that he had a special hostility to mice. The bat assured him that he was not a mouse, but a bat, and thus a second time escaped. It is wise to turn circumstances to good account. THE BALD MAN AND THE FLY by Aesop There once was a bald man who sat down after work on a hot summer's day. A fly came up and kept buzzing about his bald pate and stinging him from time to time. The man aimed a blow at his little enemy, but his palm came on his head instead. Again the fly tormented him, but this time the man was wiser and said, You will only injure yourself if you take notice of despicable enemies. The bat the Birds and the Beasts by Aesop A great conflict was about to come off between the birds and the beasts. When the two armies were collected together, the bat hesitated which to join. The birds that passed his perch said, Come with us, but he said, I am a beast. Later on, some beasts who were passing underneath him looked up and said, Come with us, but he said, I am a bird. Luckily, at the last moment peace was made, and no battle took place. So the bat came to the birds and wished to join in the rejoicings, but they all turned against him, and he had to fly away. He then went to the beasts, but soon had to beat a retreat, or else they would have torn him to pieces. Ah, said the bat, I see now. He that is neither one thing nor the other has no friends. The Bear and the Fox by Aesop a bear boasted very much of his philanthropy, saying that of all animals he was the most tender in his regard for man, for he had such respect for him that he would not even touch his dead body. A fox, hearing these words, said with a smile to the bear, Oh, that you would eat the dead and not the living. Belling the Cat by Aesop Long ago, the mice had a general council to consider what measures they could take to outwit their common enemy, the cat. Some said this and some said that, but at last a young mouse got up and said he had a proposal to make, which he thought would meet the case. You will all agree, said he, that our chief danger consists in the sly and treacherous manner in which the enemy approaches us. Now, if we could receive some signal of her approach, we could easily escape from her. I venture, therefore, to propose that a small bell be procured and attached by a ribbon round the neck of the cat. 
By this means, we should always know when she was about and could easily retire while she was in the neighborhood. This proposal met with general applause until an old mouse got up and said, That is all very well, but who is to bell the cat? The mice looked at one another and nobody spoke. Then the old mouse said, It is easy to propose impossible remedy. The Belly and the Members by Aesop One fine day it occurred to the members of the body that they were doing all the work and the belly was having all the food. So they held a meeting and after a long discussion decided to strike work till the belly consented to take its proper share of the work. So for a day or two, the hands refused to take the food, the mouth refused to receive it, and the teeth had no work to do. But after a day or two, the members began to find that they themselves were not in a very active condition. The hands could hardly move, and the mouth was all parched and dry, while the legs were unable to support the rest. So thus they found that even the belly, in its dull, quiet way, was doing necessary work for the body, and that all must work together or the body will go to pieces. The Boy Hunting Locusts by Aesop A boy was hunting for locusts. He had caught a goodly number when he saw a scorpion, and mistaking him for a locust, reached out his hand to take him. The scorpion, showing his sting, said, If you had but touched me, my friend, you would have lost me, and all your locusts too. The Boy Who Cried Wolf by Aesop There was once a young shepherd boy who tended his sheep at the foot of a mountain near a dark forest. It was rather lonely for him all day, so he thought upon a plan by which he could get a little company and some excitement. He rushed down towards the village, calling out, Wolf! Wolf! And the villagers came out to meet him, and some of them stopped with him for a considerable time. This pleased the boy so much that a few days afterwards he tried the same trick, and again the villagers came to his help. But shortly after this, a wolf actually did come out from the forest and began to worry the sheep. And the boy, of course, cried out, Wolf! Wolf! Still louder than before! But this time the villagers, who had been fooled twice before, thought the boy was again deceiving them, and nobody stirred to come to his help. So the wolf made a good meal off the boy's flock. And when the boy complained, the wise man of the village said, a liar will not be believed, even when he speaks the truth. The Bundle of Sticks by Aesop An old man on the point of death summoned his sons around him to give them some parting advice. He ordered his servants to bring in a faggot of sticks and said to his eldest son, Break it! The son strained and strained, but with all his efforts was unable to break the bundle. The other sons also tried, but none of them was successful. Untie the faggots, said the father, and each of you take a stick. When they had done so, he called out to them, Now break, and each stick was easily broken. You see my meaning, said their father. Union gives strength. The Cat Maiden by Aesop The gods were once disputing whether it was possible for a living being to change its nature. Jupiter said yes, but Venus said no. So, to try the question, Jupiter turned a cat into a maiden and gave her to a young man for a wife. The wedding was duly performed, and the young couple sat down to the wedding feast. See, said Jupiter to Venus, how becomingly she behaves. Who could tell that yesterday she was but a cat? Surely her nature is changed. Wait a minute, replied Venus, and let loose a mouse into the room. No sooner did the bride see this than she jumped up from her seat and tried to pounce upon the mouse. Ah, you see, said Venus, nature will win out. The Charcoal Burner and the Fuller by Aesop A charcoal burner carried on his trade in his own house. One day he met a friend, a fuller, and entreated him to come and live with him, saying that they should be far better neighbors and that their housekeeping expenses would be lessened. The fuller replied, The arrangement is impossible as far as I'm concerned, for whatever I should whiten, you would immediately blacken again with your charcoal. Like will draw like. The Crow and the Pitcher by Aesop 
A crow, half dead with thirst, came upon a pitcher which had once been full of water, but when the crow put its beak into the mouth of the pitcher, he found that only very little water was left in it, and that he could not reach far enough down to get at it. He tried and he tried, but at last had to give up in despair. Then a thought came to him, and he took a pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. At last, at last, he saw the water mount up near him, and after casting in a few more pebbles, he was able to quench his thirst and save his life. Little by little does the trick. The Dog and the Shadow by Aesop A dog, crossing a bridge over a stream with a piece of flesh in his mouth, saw his own shadow in the water and took it for that of another dog, with a piece of meat double his own in size. He immediately let go of his own and fiercely attacked the other dog to get his larger piece from him. He thus lost both, that which he grasped at in the water because it was a shadow, and his own because the stream swept it away. The End The Dog and the Wolf by Aesop A gaunt wolf was almost dead with hunger when he happened to meet a house dog who was passing by. "'Ah, cousin,' said the dog, "'I knew how it would be. "'Your irregular life will soon be the ruin of you. "'Why do you not work steadily as I do "'and get your food regularly given to you?' "'I would have no objection,' said the wolf, "'if I could only get a place.' "'I will easily arrange that for you,' said the dog. "'Come with me to my master, and you shall share my work.' "'So the wolf and the dog went towards the town together. "'On the way there, the wolf noticed that the hair "'on a certain part of the dog's neck was very much worn away, "'so he asked him how that had come about. "'Oh, it is nothing,' said the dog. "'That is only the place where the collar is put on at night "'to keep me chained up. "'It chafes a bit, but one soon gets used to it.' "'Is that all?' said the wolf. "'Then good-bye to you, Master Dog. "'Better starve free than be a fat slave.'" The Dog in the Manger by Aesop A dog lay in a manger, and by his growling and snapping prevented the oxen from eating the hay which had been placed for them. "'What a selfish dog!' said one of them to his companions. "'He cannot eat the hay himself, and yet refuses to allow those to eat who can.'" THE DONKEY AND THE GRASSHOPPER by Aesop A donkey, having heard some grasshoppers chirping, was highly enchanted, and desiring to possess the same charms of melody, demanded what sort of food they lived on to give them such beautiful voices. They replied, The dew. The donkey resolved that he would live only upon dew, and in a short time died of hunger. THE DONKEY IN THE LION'S SKIN by Aesop a donkey once found a lion's skin, which the hunters had left out in the sun to dry. He put it on and went towards his native village. All fled at his approach, both men and animals, and he was a proud donkey that day. In his delight, he lifted up his voice and brayed, but then everyone knew him, and his owner came up and gave him a sound cudgeling for the fright he had caused. And shortly afterwards, a fox came up to him and said, Ah, I knew you by your voice. Fine clothes may disguise, but silly words will disclose a fool. The Donkey, the Fox, and the Lion by Aesop The donkey and the fox, having entered into partnership together for their mutual protection, went out into the forest to hunt. They had not proceeded far when they met a lion. The fox, seeing imminent danger, approached the lion and promised to contrive for him the capture of the donkey if the lion would pledge his word not to harm the fox. Then, upon assuring the donkey that he would not be injured, the fox led him to a deep pit and arranged that he should fall into it. The lion, seeing that the donkey was secured, immediately clutched the fox and attacked the donkey at his leisure. THE FARMER AND THE CRANES by Aesop 
Some cranes made their feeding grounds on some plowlands nearly sown with wheat. For a long time, the farmer, brandishing an empty sling, chased them away by the terror he inspired. But when the birds found that the sling was only swung in the air, they ceased to make any notice of it and would not move. The farmer, on seeing this, charged his sling with stones and killed a great number. The remaining birds at once forsook his fields, crying to each other, It is time for us to be off to Lilliput, for this man is no longer content to scare us, but begins to show us in earnest what he can do. If words suffice not, blows must follow. The Farmer and the Snake by Aesop One winter, a farmer found a snake stiff and frozen with cold. He had compassion on it, and taking it up, placed it in his bosom. The snake was quickly revived by the warmth, and resuming its natural instincts, bit its benefactor, inflicting on him a mortal wound. Oh, cried the farmer with his last breath, I am rightly served for pitying a scoundrel. The greatest kindness will not bind the ungrateful. The Father and His Sons by Aesop A father had a family of sons who were perpetually quarreling among themselves. When he failed to heal their disputes by his exhortations, he determined to give them a practical illustration of the evils of disunion, and for this purpose he one day told them to bring him a bundle of sticks. When they had done so, he placed the bundle of sticks into the hands of each of them in succession and ordered them to break it in pieces. They tried with all their strength and were not able to do it. He next opened the bundle of sticks, took the sticks separately, one by one, and again put them into his son's hands, upon which they broke them easily. He then addressed them in these words, My sons, if you are of one mind and unite to assist each other, you will be as this bundle of sticks, uninjured by all the attempts of your enemies. But if you are divided among yourselves, you will be broken as easily as these sticks. The Fawn and His Mother by Aesop a young fawn once said to his mother, You are larger than a dog, and swifter, and more used to running, and you have your horns as a defense. Why then, O oh mother, do the hounds frighten you so? She smiled and said, I know full well, my son, that all you say is true. I have the advantages you mention. But when I hear even the bark of a single dog, I feel ready to faint and fly away as fast as I can. No arguments will give courage to the coward. The Fisher and the Little Fish by Aesop It happened that a fisher, after fishing all day, caught only a little fish. Pray let me go, master, said the fish. I am much too small for your eating just now. If you put me back into the river, I shall soon grow. Then you can make a fine meal off me. "'Nay, nay, my little fish,' said the fisher. "'I have you now. I may not catch you hereafter. "'A little thing in hand is worth more than a great thing in prospect.'" The Flies and the Honey Pot by Aesop A number of flies were attracted to a jar of honey which had been overturned in a housekeeper's room and placing their feet in it ate greedily. Their feet, however, became so smeared with the honey that they could not use their wings nor release themselves and were suffocated. Just as they were expiring, they exclaimed, "'O oh, foolish creatures that we are! For the sake of a little pleasure we have destroyed ourselves!' Pleasure bought with pains hurts. The Four Oxen and the Lion by Aesop a lion used to prowl about a field in which four oxen used to dwell. Many a time he tried to attack them, but whenever he came near, they turned their tails to one another so that whichever way he approached them, he was met by the horns of one of them. At last, however, they fell a-quarreling among themselves, and each went off to pasture alone in a separate corner of the field. Then the lion attacked them one by one and soon made an end of all four. United we stand, divided we fall. The Fox and the Cat by Aesop A fox was boasting to a cat of its clever devices for escaping its enemies. I have a whole bag of tricks, he said, which contains a hundred ways of escaping my enemies. I have only one, said the cat, but I can generally manage with that. 
Just at that moment, they heard the cry of a pack of hounds coming towards them, and the cat immediately scampered up a tree and hid herself in the boughs. This is my plan, said the cat. What are you going to do? The fox thought first of one way, then of another, and while he was debating, the hounds came nearer and nearer, and at last the fox, in his confusion, was caught up by the hounds and soon killed by the huntsman. Miss Puss, who had been looking on, said, Better one safe way than a hundred on which you cannot reckon. The Fox and the Crow by Aesop A fox once saw a crow fly off with a piece of cheese in its beak and settle on a branch of a tree. That's for me, as I am a fox, said Master Reynard, and he walked up to the foot of the tree. Good day, Mistress Crow, he cried. How well you are looking today, how glossy your feathers, how bright your eye. I feel sure your voice must surpass that of other birds, just as your figure does. Let me hear but one song from you that I may greet you as the Queen of Birds. The crow lifted up her head and began to caw her best, but the moment she opened her mouth, the piece of cheese fell to the ground, only to be snapped up by Master Fox. That will do, said he. That was all I wanted. In exchange for your cheese, I will give you a piece of advice for the future. Do not trust flatterers. The Fox and the Grapes by Aesop One hot summer's day, a fox was strolling through an orchard till he came to a bunch of grapes, just ripening on a vine which had been trained over a lofty branch. Just the thing to quench my thirst, quoth he. Drawing back a few paces, he took a run and a jump and just missed the bunch. Turning round again with a one, two, three, he jumped up, but with no greater success. Again and again he tried after the tempting morsel, but at last had to give it up and walked away with his nose in the air, saying, I am sure they are sour. It is easy to despise what you cannot get. The Fox and the Lion by Aesop When first the fox saw the lion, he was terribly frightened and ran away and hid himself in the wood. Next time, however, he came near the king of beasts, he stopped at a safe distance and watched him pass by. The third time they came near one another, the fox went straight up to the lion and passed the time of day with him, asking him how his family were and when he should have the pleasure of seeing him again, then turning his tail, he parted from the lion without much ceremony. Familiarity breeds contempt. The Fox and the Mosquitoes by Aesop A fox, after crossing a river, got its tail entangled in a bush and could not move. A number of mosquitoes, seeing its plight, settled upon it and enjoyed a good meal undisturbed by its tail. A hedgehog, strolling by, took pity upon the fox and went up to him. "'You are in a bad way, neighbor,' said the hedgehog. "'Shall I relieve you by driving off those mosquitoes who are sucking your blood?' "'Thank you, Master Hedgehog,' said the fox. "'But I would rather not.' "'Why, how is that?' asked the hedgehog. "'Well, you see,' was the answer, "'these mosquitoes have had their fill. "'If you drive these away, others will come with fresh appetite and bleed me to death.'" The Fox and the Stork by Aesop At one time the fox and the stork were on visiting terms and seemed very good friends. So the fox invited the stork to dinner and, for a joke, put nothing before her but some soup in a very shallow dish. This the fox could easily lap up, but the stork could only wet the end of her long bill in it and left the meal as hungry as when she began. I am sorry, said the fox. The soup is not to your liking. Pray do not apologize, said the stork. I hope you will return this visit and come and dine with me soon. So a day was appointed when the fox should visit the stork. But when they were seated at table, all that was for their dinner was contained in a very long-necked jar with a narrow mouth in which the fox could not insert his snout. So all he could manage to do was lick the outside of the jar. I will not apologize for the dinner, said the stork. One bad turn deserves another. The Fox, the Rooster, and the Dog by Aesop One moonlight night, a fox was prowling about a farmer's hen coop and saw a cock roosting high up beyond his reach. 
Good news, good news, he cried. Why, what is that, said the rooster. King Lion has declared a universal truce. No beast may hurt a bird henceforth, but all shall dwell together in brotherly friendship. Why, that is good news, said the rooster. And there I see someone coming with whom we can share the good tidings. And so saying, he craned his neck forward and looked afar off. What is it you see? said the fox. It is only my master's dog that is coming towards us. What, going so soon? he continued, as the fox began to turn away as soon as he had heard the news. Will you not stop and congratulate the dog on the reign of universal peace? I would gladly do so, said the fox, but I fear he may not have heard the king lion's decree. Cunning often outwits itself. The Fox Without a Tail by Aesop it happened that a fox caught its tail in a trap and in struggling to release himself lost all of it but the stump. At first he was ashamed to show himself among his fellow foxes, but at last he determined to put a bolder face upon his misfortune and summoned all the foxes to a general meeting to consider a proposal which he had to place before them. When they had assembled together, the fox proposed that they should all do away with their tails. He pointed out how inconvenient a tail was when they were pursued by their enemies, the dogs, how much it was in the way when they desired to sit down and hold a friendly conversation with one another. He failed to see any advantage in carrying about such a useless encumbrance. That is all very well, said one of the older foxes. But I do not think you would have recommended us to dispense with our chief ornament if you had not happened to lose it yourself. Distrust Interested Advice The Frog and the Ox by Aesop Once a little frog sat by a big frog by the side of a pool. Oh, father, said he, I have just seen the biggest animal in the world. It was as big as a mountain, and it had horns on its head, and it had hoofs divided in two. Poor child, said the old frog, that was only Farmer White's ox. He is not so very big. I could easily make myself as big as he. And he blew, and he blew, and he blew, and swelled himself out. Was he as big as that? he asked the little frog. Oh, much bigger, said the little frog. The old frog blew and blew and blew again and swelled himself out more than ever. Was he bigger than that, he said. Much, much bigger, said the little frog. I can make myself as big, said the old frog. And once more, he blew and blew and blew and swelled himself out, and he burst. Self-conceit leads to self-destruction. The Goose with the Golden Eggs by Aesop One day, a countryman going to the nest of his goose found there an egg all yellow and glittering. When he took it up, it was as heavy as lead, and he was going to throw it away because he thought a trick had been played upon him. But he took it home on second thoughts and soon found to his delight that it was an egg of pure gold. Every morning the same thing occurred, and he soon became rich by selling his eggs. As he grew rich, he grew greedy, and thinking to get at once all the gold the goose could give, he killed it and opened it only to find nothing. Greed oft o'erreaches itself. The Hare and the Tortoise by Aesop The hare was once boasting of his speed before the other animals. I have never yet been beaten, said he. When I put forth my full speed, I challenge anyone here to race with me. The tortoise said quietly, I accept your challenge. That is a good joke, said the hare. I could dance round you all the way. Keep your boasting till you've beaten, answered the tortoise. Shall we race? So a course was fixed and a start was made. The hare darted almost out of sight at once, but soon stopped and to show his contempt for the tortoise lay down to have a nap. The tortoise plodded on and plodded on, and when the hare awoke from his nap, he saw the tortoise just near the winning post and could not run up in time to save the race. Then, said the tortoise, plodding wins the race. The Heart and the Hunter by Aesop 
The heart was once drinking from a pool and admiring the noble figure he made there. Ah, said he, where can you see such noble horns as these with such antlers? I wish I had legs more worthy to bear such a noble crown. It is a pity they are so slim and slight. At that moment a hunter approached and sent an arrow whistling after him. Away bounded the hart, and soon, by the aid of his nimble legs, was nearly out of sight of the hunter. But not noticing where he was going, he passed under some trees with branches growing low down, in which his antlers were caught, so that the hunter had time to come up. Alas, alas, cried the hart, we often despise what is most useful to us. The Heart in the Ox Stall by Aesop a hart, hotly pursued by the hounds, fled for refuge into an ox stall and buried itself in a truss of hay, leaving nothing to be seen but the tips of his horns. Soon after the hunters came up and asked if anyone had seen the hart. The stable boys, who had been resting after their dinner, looked round but could see nothing, and the hunters went away. Shortly afterwards, the master came in and, looking round, saw that something unusual had taken place. He pointed to the truss of hay and said, What are those two curious things sticking out of the hay? And when the stable boys came to look, they discovered the heart and soon made an end of him. He thus learnt that nothing escapes the master's eye. Hercules and the Wagoner by Aesop A carter was driving a wagon along a country lane when the wheels sank down deep into a rut. The rustic driver, stupefied and aghast, stood looking at the wagon and did nothing but utter loud cries to Hercules to come and help him. Hercules, it is said, appeared and thus addressed him, "'Put your shoulders to the wheels, my man. Goad on your bullocks, and never more pray to me for help until you have done your best to help yourself, or, depend upon it, you will henceforth pray in vain.'" Self-help is the best help. Hercules and the Wagoner by Aesop A wagoner was once driving a heavy load along a very muddy way. At last he came to a part of the road where the wheels sank halfway into the mire, and the more the horses pulled, the deeper sank the wheels. So the wagoner threw down his whip and knelt down and prayed to Hercules the Strong, "'Oh, Hercules, help me in this my hour of distress,' quoth he." But Hercules appeared to him and said, "'Tut, man, don't sprawl there. Get up and put your shoulder to the wheel. The gods help them that help themselves.'" The Herdsman and the Lost Bull by Aesop A herdsman tending his flock in a forest lost a bull calf from the fold. After a long and fruitless search, he made a vow that if he could only discover the thief who had stolen the calf, he would offer a lamb in sacrifice to Hermes, Pan, and the guardian deities of the forest. Not long afterwards, as he ascended a small hillock, he saw at its foot a lion feeding on the calf. Terrified at the sight, he lifted his eyes and his hands to heaven and said, "'Just now I vowed to offer a lamb to the guardian deities of the forest "'if I could only find out who robbed me. "'But now that I have discovered the thief, "'I would willingly add a full-grown bull to the calf I have lost "'if I may only secure my own escape from him in safety.'" The Horse, Hunter, and Stag by Aesop a quarrel had arisen between the horse and the stag, so the horse came to a hunter to ask his help to take revenge on the stag. The hunter agreed, but said, "'If you desire to conquer the stag, you must permit me to place this piece of iron between your jaws so that I may guide you with these reins and allow this saddle to be placed upon your back so that I may keep steady upon you as we follow after the enemy.' The horse agreed to the conditions, and the hunter soon saddled and bridled him. Then, with the aid of the hunter, the horse soon overcame the stag, and said to the hunter, "'Now, get off and remove those things from my mouth and back.' "'Not so fast, friend,' said the hunter. "'I have now got you under bit and spur, and prefer to keep you as you are at present. "'If you allow men to use you for your own purposes, they will use you for theirs.' THE JAY AND THE PEACOCK 
by Aesop. A jay venturing into a yard where peacocks used to walk found there a number of feathers which had fallen from the peacocks when they were molting. He tied them all to his tail and strutted toward the peacocks. When he came near them, they soon discovered the cheat and strided up to him, pecked at him, and plucked away his borrowed plumes. So the jay could do no better than to go back to the other jays who had watched his behavior from a distance. But they were equally annoyed with him and told him, It is not only fine feathers that make fine birds. The Kingdom of the Lion by Aesop The beasts of the field and forest had a lion as their king. He was neither wrathful, cruel, nor tyrannical, but just and gentle as a king could be. During his reign, he made a royal proclamation for a general assembly of all the birds and beasts and drew up conditions for a universal league in which the wolf and the lamb, the panther and the kid, the tiger and the stag, the dog and the hare should live together in perfect peace and amity. The hare said, Oh, how I have longed to see this day in which the weak shall take their place with impunity by the side of the strong. And after the hare said this, he ran for his life. The Laborer and the Nightingale by Aesop A laborer lay listening to a nightingale's song throughout the summer night. So pleased was he with it that the next night he set a trap for it and captured it. Now that I have caught thee, he cried, thou shalt always sing to me. We nightingales never sing in a cage, said the bird. Then I'll eat thee, said the laborer. I have always heard say that a nightingale on toast is dainty morsel. Nay, kill me not, said the nightingale, but let me free, and I'll tell thee three things far better worth than my poor body. The laborer let him loose, and he flew up to a branch of a tree and said, Never believe a captive's promise, that's one thing. Then again, keep what you have. And third piece of advice is, sorrow not over what is lost forever. Then the songbird flew away. The Lion and the Mouse by Aesop A lion was awakened from sleep by a mouse running over his face. Rising up angrily, he caught him and was about to kill him when the mouse piteously entreated, saying, If you would only spare my life, I would be sure to repay your kindness. The lion laughed and let him go. It happened shortly after this that the lion was caught by some hunters who bound him by strong ropes to the ground. The mouse, recognizing his roar, came and gnawed the rope with his teeth and set him free, exclaiming, "'You ridiculed the idea of my ever being able to help you, not expecting to receive from me any repayment of your favor. Now you know that it is possible for even a mouse to confer benefits on a lion.'" The Lion and the Statue by Aesop A man and a lion were discussing the relative strength of men and lions in general. The man contended that he and his fellows were stronger than lions by reason of their greater intelligence. "'Come now with me,' he cried, "'and I will soon prove that I am right.' So he took him into the public gardens and showed him a statue of Hercules overcoming the lion and tearing his mouth in two. "'That is all very well,' said the lion, "'but proves nothing, for it was a man who made the statue.' We can easily represent things as we wish them to be. The Lion in Love by Aesop A lion once fell in love with a beautiful maiden and proposed marriage to her parents. The old people did not know what to say. They did not like to give their daughter to the lion, yet they did not wish to enrage the king of beasts. At last the father said, We feel highly honored by your majesty's proposal, but you see our daughter is a tender young thing, and we fear that in the vehemence of your affection you might possibly do her some injury. Might I venture to suggest that your majesty should have your claws removed and your teeth extracted? Then we would gladly consider your proposal again. The lion was so much in love that he had his claws trimmed and his big teeth taken out, But when he came again to the parents of the young girl, they simply laughed in his face and bade him do his worst. Love can tame the wildest. The Lion, the Fox, and the Beasts by Aesop 
The lion once gave out that he was sick unto death and summoned the animals to come and hear his last will and testament. So the goat came to the lion's cave and stopped there listening for a long time. Then a sheep went in, and before she came out, a calf came up to receive the last wishes of the lord of the beasts. But soon the lion seemed to recover and came to the mouth of his cave and saw the fox, who had been waiting outside for some time. "'Why do you not come to pay your respects to me?' said the lion to the fox. "'I beg your majesty's pardon,' said the fox, "'but I noticed the tracks of the animals that have already come to you, "'and while I see many hoof marks going in, I see none coming out. "'Till the animals that have entered your cave come out again, "'I prefer to remain in the open air. "'It is easier to get into the enemy's toils than out again.'" THE MAN AND HIS TWO WIVES by Aesop In the old days, when men were allowed to have many wives, a middle-aged man had one wife that was old and one that was young. Each loved him very much and desired to see him like herself. Now the man's hair was turning gray, which the young wife did not like, as it made him look too old for her husband. So every night she used to comb his hair and pick out the white ones. But the elder wife saw her husband growing gray with great pleasure, for she did not like to be mistaken for his mother. So every morning she used to arrange his hair and pick out as many of the black ones as she could. The consequence was the man soon found himself entirely bald. Yield to all, and you will soon have nothing to yield. The Man and the Lion by Aesop a man and a lion traveled together through the forest. They soon began to boast of their respective superiority to each other in strength and prowess. As they were disputing, they passed a statue carved in stone, which represented a lion strangled by a man. The traveler pointed to it and said, See there, how strong we are, and how we prevail over even the king of beasts. The lion replied, This statue was made by one of you men. If we lions knew how to erect statues, you would see the man placed under the paw of the lion. One story is good till another is told. The Man and the Satyr by Aesop A man had lost his way in a wood one bitter winter's night. As he was roaming about, a satyr came up to him, and finding that he had lost his way, promised to give him a lodging for the night and guide him out of the forest in the morning. As he went along to the satyr's cell, the man raised both his hands to his mouth and kept on blowing at them. "'What do you do that for?' said the satyr. "'My hands are numb with the cold,' said the man, "'and my breath warms them.' After this, they arrived at the satyr's home, and soon the satyr put a smoking dish of porridge before him. But when the man raised his spoon to his mouth, he began blowing upon it. "'And what do you do that for?' said the satyr. "'The porridge is too hot, and my breath will cool it.' "'Out you go,' said the satyr. "'I will have naught to do with a man who can blow hot and cold with the same breath.'" The Man and the Serpent by Aesop A countryman's son by accident trod upon a serpent's tail, which turned and bit him so that he died. The father, in a rage, got his axe and, pursuing the serpent, cut off part of its tail. So the serpent, in revenge, began stinging several of the farmer's cattle and caused him severe loss. Well, the farmer thought it best to make up with the serpent and brought food and honey to the mouth of its lair and said to it, Let's forget and forgive. Perhaps you were right to punish my son and take vengeance on my cattle. But surely I was right in trying to revenge him. Now that we are both satisfied, why should not we be friends again? No, no, said the serpent. Take away your gifts. You cannot forget the death of your son, nor I the loss of my tail. Injuries may be forgiven, but not forgotten. The Man and the Wood by Aesop A man came into a wood one day, with an axe in his hand, and begged all the trees to give him a small branch which he wanted for a particular purpose. The trees were good-natured and gave him one of their branches. What did the man do but fix it into the axe head and soon set to work cutting down tree after tree? 
Then the trees saw how foolish they had been in giving their enemy the means of destroying themselves. The Man, the Boy, and the Donkey by Aesop A man and his son were once going with their donkey to market. As they were walking along, by its side a countryman passed them and said, "'You fools! What is a donkey for but to ride upon?' So the man put the boy on the donkey, and they went on their way. But soon they passed a group of men, one of whom said, "'See that lazy youngster? He lets his father walk while he rides!' So the man ordered his boy to get off, and got on himself. But they hadn't gone far when they passed two women, one of whom said to the other, "'Shame on that lazy lout to let his poor little son trudge along!' Well, the man didn't know what to do, but at last he took his boy up before him on the donkey." By this time they had come to a town, and the passers-by began to jeer and point at them. The man stopped and asked what they were scoffing at. The men said, "'Aren't you ashamed of yourself for overloading that poor donkey of yours and your hulking son?' The man and boy got off and tried to think what to do. They thought and they thought, till at last they cut down a pole, tied the donkey's feet to it, and raised the pole and the donkey to their shoulders. They went along amid the laughter of all who met them, till they came to Market Bridge, when the donkey, getting one of his feet loose, kicked out and caused the boy to drop his end of the pole. In the struggle, the donkey fell over the bridge, and his four feet being tied together, he was drowned. "'That will teach you,' said an old man who had followed them." Please all, and you will please none. The Milkmaid and Her Pail by Aesop Patty the Milkmaid was going to market carrying her milk in a pail on her head. As she went along, she began calculating what she would do with the money she would get for the milk. I'll buy some fowls from Farmer Brown, said she, and they will lay eggs each morning, which I will sell to the parson's wife. With the money that I get from the sale of these eggs, I'll buy myself a new dimity frock and a chip hat. And when I go to market, won't all the young men come up and speak to me? Polly Shaw will be that jealous, but I don't care. I shall just look at her and toss my head like this. As she spoke, she tossed her head back, the pail fell off it, and all the milk was spilt. So she had to go home and tell her mother what had occurred. "'Ah, my child,' said the mother, "'do not count your chickens before they are hatched.'" The Miser and His Gold by Aesop Once upon a time there was a miser who used to hide his gold at the foot of a tree in his garden, but every week he used to go and dig it up and gloat over his gains. A robber, who had noticed this, went and dug up the gold and decamped with it. When the miser next came to gloat over his treasures, he found nothing but the empty hole. He tore his hair and raised such an outcry that all the neighbors came around him, and he told them how he used to come and visit his gold. "'Did you ever take any of it out?' asked one of them. "'Nay,' said he, "'I only came to look at it.' "'Then come again and look at the hole,' said a neighbor. "'It will do you just as much good.' "'Wealth unused might as well not exist.' THE MOLE AND HIS MOTHER by Aesop A mole, a creature blind from birth, once said to his mother, I am sure that I can see, mother. In the desire to prove him his mistake, his mother placed before him a few grains of frankincense and asked, What is it? The young mole said, It is a pebble. His mother exclaimed, My son, I am afraid that you are not only blind, but that you have lost your sense of smell. THE MOUNTAIN IN LABOR by Aesop A mountain was once greatly agitated. Loud groans and noises were heard, and crowds of people came from all parts to see what was the matter. While they were assembled in anxious expectation of some terrible calamity, out came a mouse. Don't make much ado about nothing. THE NURSE AND THE WOLF by Aesop "'Be quiet now,' said an old nurse to a child sitting on her lap. "'If you make that noise again, I will throw you to the wolf.' Now it chanced that a wolf was passing close under the window, as this was said. So he crouched down by the side of the house and waited. "'I am in good luck today,' thought he. 
It is sure to cry soon, and a daintier morsel I haven't had for many a long day. So he waited and he waited and he waited till at last the child began to cry, and the wolf came forward before the window and looked up to the nurse, wagging his tail. But all the nurse did was to shut down the window and call for help, and the dogs of the house came rushing out. Ah, said the wolf as he galloped away, enemies' promises were made to be broken. The Peacock and Juno by Aesop A peacock once placed a petition before Juno, desiring to have the voice of a nightingale in addition to his other attractions, but Juno refused his request. When he persisted and pointed out that he was her favorite bird, she said, Be content with your lot. One cannot be first in everything. The Piglet, the Sheep, and the Goat by Aesop A young pig was shut up in a fold yard with a goat and a sheep. On one occasion, when the shepherd laid hold of him, he grunted and squeaked and resisted violently. The sheep and the goat complained of his distressing cries, saying, He often handles us, and we do not cry out. To this the pig replied, Your handling and mine are very different things. He catches you only for your wool or your milk, but he lays hold on me for my very life. The Pomegranate, Apple Tree, and Bramble by Aesop The pomegranate and apple tree disputed as to which was the most beautiful. When their strife was at its height, a bramble from the neighboring hedge lifted up its voice and said in a boastful tone, Pray, my dear friends, in my presence at least cease from such vain disputings. The Rooster and the Pearl by Aesop A cock was once strutting up and down the farmyard among the hens when suddenly he espied something shining amid the straw. Ho, ho, quoth he, that's for me, and soon rooted it out from beneath the straw. What did it turn out to be but a pearl that by some chance had been lost in the yard? You may be a treasure, quoth Master Cock, To men that prize you, but for me I would rather have a single barley corn than a peck of pearls. Precious things are for those that can prize them. The Raven and the Swan by Aesop A raven saw a swan and desired to secure for himself the same beautiful plumage. Supposing that the swan's splendid white color arose from his washing in the water in which he swam, the raven left the altars in the neighborhood where he picked up his living and took up residence in the lakes and pools. But cleansing his feathers as often as he would, he could not change their color, while through want of food he perished. Change of habit cannot alter nature. The Salt Merchant and His Donkey by Aesop A peddler drove his donkey to the seashore to buy salt. His road home lay across a stream into which his donkey, making a false step, fell by accident and rose up again with his load considerably lighter as the water melted the sack. The peddler retraced his steps and refilled his panniers with a larger quantity of salt than before. When he came again to the stream, the donkey fell down on purpose in the same spot, and, regaining his feet with the weight of his load much diminished, brayed triumphantly as if he had obtained what he desired. The peddler saw through his trick and drove him for the third time to the coast, where he bought a cargo of sponges instead of salt. The donkey, again playing the fool, fell down on purpose when he reached the stream, But the sponges became swollen with water, greatly increasing his load. And thus his trick recoiled on him, for he now carried on his back a double burden. The Serpent and the File by Aesop A serpent, in the course of its wanderings, came into an armorer's shop. As he glided over the floor, he felt his skin pricked by a file lying there. In a rage, he turned round upon it and tried to dart his fangs into it, but he could do no harm to heavy iron, and had soon to give over his wrath. It is useless attacking the insensible. The Sick Lion 
by Aesop. A lion had come to the end of his days and lay sick unto death at the mouth of his cave, gasping for breath. The animals, his subjects, came round him and drew nearer as he grew more and more helpless. When they saw him on the point of death, they thought to themselves, Now is the time to pay off old grudges. So the boar came up and drove at him with his tusks. Then a bull gored him with his horns. Still the lion lay helpless before them. So the ass, feeling quite safe from danger, came up and, turning his tail to the lion, kicked up his heels into his face. This is a double death, growled the lion. Only cowards insult dying majesty. The Swallow and the Crow by Aesop The swallow and the crow had a contention about their plumage. The crow put an end to the dispute by saying, Your feathers are all very well in the spring, but mine protect me against the winter. Fair-weather friends are not worth much. The Swallow and the Other Birds by Aesop It happened that a countryman was sowing some hemp seeds in a field where a swallow and some other birds were hopping about picking up their food. Beware of that man, quoth the swallow. Why, what is he doing? said the others. That is hemp seed he is sowing. Be careful to pick up every one of the seeds, or else you will repent it. The birds paid no heed to the swallow's words, and by and by the hemp grew up and was made into cord, and of the cords nets were made, and many a bird that had despised the swallow's advice was caught in nets made out of that very hemp. What did I tell you? said the swallow. Destroy the seed of evil, or it will grow up to your ruin. The Tortoise and the Eagle by Aesop a tortoise, lazily basking in the sun, complained to the seabirds of her hard fate that no one would teach her to fly. An eagle, hovering near, heard her lamentation and demanded what reward she would give him if he would take her aloft and float her in the air. "'I will give you,' she said, "'all the riches of the Red Sea.' "'I will teach you to fly, then,' said the eagle, and taking her up in his talons, he carried her almost to the clouds. Suddenly he let her go, and she fell on a lofty mountain, dashing her shell to pieces. The tortoise exclaimed in the moment of death, I have deserved my present fate, for what had I to do with wings and clouds, who can with difficulty move about on the earth? If men had all they wished, they would be often ruined. The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse by Aesop now you must know that a town mouse once upon a time went on a visit to his cousin in the country. He was rough and ready, this cousin, but he loved his town friend and made him heartily welcome. Beans and bacon, cheese and bread were all he had to offer, but he offered them freely. The town mouse rather turned up his long nose at this country fair and said, I cannot understand, cousin, how you can put up with such poor food as this. But, of course, you cannot expect anything better in the country. Come you with me, and I will show you how to live. When you have been in town a week, you will wonder how you could ever have stood a country life. No sooner said than done, the two mice set off for the town and arrived at the town mouse's residence late at night. "'You will want some refreshment after our long journey,' said the polite town mouse, and took his friend into the grand dining room. There they found the remains of a fine feast, and soon the two mice were eating up jellies and cakes and all that was nice. Suddenly they heard growling and barking. "'What is that?' said the country mouse. "'It is only the dogs of the house,' answered the other. "'Only?' said the country mouse. "'I do not like that music at my dinner.' Just at that moment, the door flew open. In came two huge mastiffs, and the two mice had to scamper down and run off. Goodbye, cousin, said the country mouse. What, going so soon, said the other. Yes, he replied. Better beans and bacon in peace than cakes and ale in fear. The Traveler and His Dog by Aesop A traveler, about to set out on a journey, saw his dog stand at the door stretching himself. He asked him sharply, Why do you stand there gaping? Everything is ready but you, so come with me instantly. The dog, wagging his tail, replied, Oh, master, I am quite ready. 
It is you for whom I am waiting. The loiterer often blames delay on his more active friend. The Tree and the Reed by Aesop Well, little one, said a tree to a reed that was growing at its foot, why do you not plant your feet deeply in the ground and raise your head boldly in the air as I do? I am contented with my lot, said the reed. I may not be so grand, but I think I am safer. Safe, sneered the tree. Who shall pluck me up by the roots or bow my head to the ground? But it soon had to repent of its boastings, for a hurricane arose which tore it up from its roots and cast it a useless log on the ground, while the little reed, bending to the force of the wind, soon stood upright again when the storm had passed over. Obscurity often brings safety. The Two Crabs by Aesop One fine day, two crabs came out from their home to take a stroll on the sand. Child, said the mother, you are walking very ungracefully. You should accustom yourself to walking straight forward without twisting from side to side. Pray, mother, said the young one, do but set the example yourself, and I will follow you. Example is the best precept. The Two Fellows and the Bear by Aesop Two fellows were traveling together through a wood when a bear rushed out upon them. One of the travelers happened to be in front, and he seized hold of the branch of a tree and hid himself among the leaves. The other, seeing no help for it, threw himself flat down upon the ground with his face in the dust. The bear, coming up to him, put his muzzle close to his ear and sniffed and sniffed. But at last, with a growl, he shook his head and slouched off, for bears will not touch dead meat. Then the fellow in the tree came down to his comrade and, laughing, said, "'What was it that Master Bruin whispered to you?' "'He told me,' said the other, "'never trust a friend who deserts you at a pinch.'" The Two Pots by Aesop Two pots had been left on the bank of a river, one of brass and one of earthenware. When the tide rose, they both floated off down the stream. Now the earthenware pot tried its best to keep aloof from the brass one, which cried out, Fear nothing, friend, I will not strike you. But I may come in contact with you, said the other, if I come too close, and whether I hit you or you hit me, I shall suffer for it. The strong and the weak cannot keep company. The Wolf and the Crane by Aesop A wolf, who had a bone stuck in his throat, hired a crane for a large sum to put her head into his mouth and draw out the bone. When the crane had extracted the bone and demanded the promised payment, the wolf, grinning and grinding his teeth, exclaimed, why, you have surely already had a sufficient recompense in having been permitted to draw out your head in safety from the mouth and jaws of a wolf. In serving the wicked, expect no reward, and be thankful if you escape injury for your pains. The Wolf and the Kid by Aesop A kid was perched up on the top of a house and looking down saw a wolf passing under him. Immediately he began to revile and attack his enemy. "'Murderer and thief!' he cried. "'What do you here, near honest folks' houses? "'How dare you make an appearance where your vile deeds are known?' "'Curse away, my young friend,' said the wolf. "'It is easy to be brave from a safe distance.'" The Wolf and the Lamb by Aesop Wolf, meeting with a lamb astray from the fold, resolved not to lay violent hands on him, but to find some plea to justify to the lamb the wolf's right to eat him. He thus addressed him, Sirrah, last year you grossly insulted me. Indeed, bleated the lamb in a mournful tone of voice, I was not then born. Then, said the wolf, you feed in my pasture. No good, sir, replied the lamb, I have not yet tasted grass. Again the wolf, you drink of my well. No, exclaimed the lamb, I never yet drank water, for as yet my mother's milk is both food and drink to me. Upon which the wolf seized him and ate him up, saying, Well, I won't remain supperless, even though you refute every one of my imputations. The tyrant will always find a pretext for his tyranny. The Wind and the Sun by Aesop 
The wind and the sun were disputing which was the stronger. Suddenly they saw a traveler coming down the road, and the sun said, I see a way to decide our dispute. Whichever of us can cause that traveler to take off his cloak shall be regarded as the stronger. You begin. So the sun retired behind a cloud, and the wind began to blow as hard as it could upon the traveler. But the harder he blew, the more closely did the traveler wrap his cloak round him, till at last the wind had to give up in despair. Then the sun came out and shone in all his glory upon the traveler, who soon found it too hot to walk with his cloak on. Kindness affects more than severity. The Wolf in Sheep's Clothing by Aesop A wolf found great difficulty in getting at the sheep, owing to the vigilance of the shepherd and his dogs. But one day it found the skin of a sheep that had been flayed and thrown aside, so it put it on over its own pelt and strolled down among the sheep. The lamb that belonged to the sheep, whose skin the wolf was wearing, began to follow the wolf in the sheep's clothing. So leading the lamb a little apart, he soon made a meal off her, and for some time he succeeded in deceiving the sheep and enjoying hearty meals. Appearances are deceptive. The Woodman and the Serpent by Aesop One wintry day a woodman was tramping home from his work when he saw something black lying on the snow. When he came closer, he saw it was a serpent, to all appearance dead. But he took it up and put it in his bosom to warm while he hurried home. As soon as he got indoors, he put the serpent down on the hearth before the fire. The children watched it and saw it slowly come to life again. Then one of them stooped down to stroke it, but the serpent raised its head and put out its fangs and was about to sting the child to death. So the woodman seized his axe and with one stroke cut the serpent in two. Ah, said he, no gratitude from the wicked. The Dog in the Manger by Aesop a dog looking out for its afternoon nap jumped into the manger of an ox and lay there cozily upon the straw. But soon the ox, returning from its afternoon work, came up to the manger and wanted to eat some of the straw. The dog, in a rage, being awakened from its slumber, stood up and barked at the ox, and whenever it came near attempted to bite it. At last the ox had to give up the hope of getting at the straw and went away muttering, Ah, uh, people often grudge others what they cannot enjoy themselves.